Next morning, Dorian Hawkman was taken to see Baron Callan again. The serpent mask seemed to bear an almost cynical expression as it regarded him, but the Baron said hardly a word, merely led him through a series of rooms and halls until they reached a room with a door of plain steel. This was opened to reveal a similar door that, when opened, revealed a third door. This led into a small, blindingly lighted chamber of white metal that contained a machine of intense beauty. It consisted almost entirely of delicate red, gold and silver webs, strands of which brushed Hawkmoon's face and had the warmth and vitality of human skin. Faint music came from the webs, which moved as if in a breeze. It seems alive, said Hawkmoon. It is alive, Baron Cullen whispered proudly. It is alive. Is it a beast? No, it is the creation of sorcery. I'm not even sure what it is. I built it according to the instructions of a grimoire I bought from an Easterner many years ago. It is the machine of the Black Jewel. Ah, and soon you will become much more intimately acquainted with it, my Lord Duke. Deep within him, Hawkmoon felt a faint stirring of panic, but it did not begin to rise to the surface of his mind. He let the strands of red and gold and silver caress him. It is not complete, Callan said. It must spin the jewel. Move closer to it, my lord. Move into it. You will feel no pain. I guarantee it must spin the jewel, the black jewel. Hawkmoon obeyed the baron and the webs rustled and began to sing. His ears became confounded. The traceries of red, gold and silver confused his eyes. The machine of the black jewel fondled him, seemed to enter him, become him, and he it. He sighed and his voice was the music of the webs. He moved and his limbs were tenuous strands. There was pressure from within his skull and he felt a sense of absolute warmth and softness suffuse his body. He drifted as if bodiless and lost the sense of passing time, but he knew that the machine was spinning something from its own substance, making something that became hard and dense and implanted itself in his forehead so that suddenly he seemed to possess a third eye and stared out at the world with a new kind of vision. Then gradually this faded, and he was looking at Baron Callan, who had removed his mask the better to regard him. Hawkmoon felt a sudden sharp pain in his head. The pain vanished almost at once. He looked back at the machine, but its colours had dulled and its webs seemed to have shrunk. He lifted a hand to his forehead and felt with a shock something there that had not been there before. It was hard and smooth. It was part of him. He shuddered. 